Welcome folks, Mac T here, and we're going to go over the Foreskin Light program that you can utilize within your smartphone. And this will work uh, generally with the uh, Androids and also with the uh, Apple phones, as long as you have the right device. And as you can see here, I have in the picture, I have an OBD Lynx MX that I utilize. And you can find more of these on MacTGarage.com with the uh, links to the various devices that I have used and are recommended. So just go here. I'll show you a few photos of it. And I'll post a link down below at MacTGarage.com so you can get that information and purchase these devices. Now this is going to be a series and I'm going to start with the... Uh, perimeter or parameter IDs and uh, I always get that max mixed up but uh, the parameter IDs and we're going to start alphabetically with A and go over each one in the series of the alphabet and this first uh, series will be the A's and we're going to test and look what these actually do and what information you get now I do recommend Getting these devices, this OBD Lynx MX or something similar, a VPeak or, or a Blue uh, Driver, any one of these uh, OBD devices will help you work with Foreskin Light, which is a $5 app, and it beats the heck out of going to the parts store and listen to their sales pitches and, and helps you monitor your vehicle. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and look at these real quick and see what they say and what they do. And we're starting out with A, and the next series will be the B's, and so on and so forth through the alphabet as we get through the entire series. So I'll be putting these up every once in a while, and we'll just call this our four scan light series and learn what these things do. So starting out first with ambient air temperature. Pretty simple. It is called an AAT, ambient air temperature. Uh, no real detailed description to it, but it has available types, and that is going to be your temperature, which is a Celsius or Fahrenheit, and it's going to list the maximum and minimum amount. It is set at auto and everything else as far as that goes. Uh, digits after decimal points and dashboard, dashboard display. Now what this does is it tells you essentially what your uh, outside air temperature is coming into your engine. Ambient air temperature sensor input unreliable AAT underline UR and again we have uh, the mode which is a no for a fault and a yes for a fault. Essentially nothing that you'd want to monitor here because all it is essentially is a telling you whether or not switched on or switched off if there is a problem so not much you can learn from this one we have the ambient air temperature sensor voltage yes every sensor has a voltage and it's going to tell you what you're going to have and it's going to read out what the minimum and maximum volts on are and this would be good to help you decide is the sensor working properly because you can tell by the voltages it displays and I do not know what the minimum I think it's a 0.5 volts is the is the set on that so anything higher or lower than that might indicate you're having a problem now we have our air conditioning compressor command state now this is telling you whether AC is working right AAC underline CMD uh, no detailed description there, but essentially all the values are is on or off. So it's basically telling you if your AC is on or if it is off as far as the compressor running. And that's about all you're going to get out of that one. Now AC pressure, this is one that I am using. You can see by the blue check mark and it tells you ACP underlying pressure, AC pressure sensor and available types. It tells you what your pressures are and I usually run it under PSI, but you also have your other measurements, bar and KPA. But you're going to have your maximum and minimum pressure and it's going to vary as you're driving and as your pressure goes up and down. I've seen it running when I'm heading down the highway as high as the 200s and low as the 90s. So it depends how it's being used and how much demand is being placed on it. Now adaptive fuel table status. ADPT1 underline F detailed description this perimeter parameter indicates 
in real time whether a fault is present so essentially not really too useful to you uh, because you'll have a light on your dash but it's either no fault or yes fault and uh, that's all you're going to get out of that one adaptive fuel table status 2 ADP 2 underline F again detailed uh, description parameter indicates a uh, real-time whether a fault is present again it's a yes or no thing that's going to happen and you'll probably see a dash light and let's see we have our AF mod 11 PCM control of air fuel to check O2 S11 status detailed description not much there basically it's going to tell you whether or not your O2s are working very good or not and you're either going to get a yes or a no on that so not much detailed information you're going to get for this one and then our other O2 sensor status, which is the AF Mod 221, which is Bank 2 Sensor 1, and the other one is Bank 1 Sensor 1. Uh, again, yes or no status. Not much you're going to gain out of this by having this monitored. And then we have our secondary air system supported air sup dash DC and uh, basically it's also a yes or no mode on here you're not gonna see too much out of that again not a not a parameter that you're gonna wanna monitor and accelerator position yes APP accelerator pedal position your detailed description on this one is a parameter uh, represents accelerator pedal position there are three APP signals to ensure correct input to the ECU if any one signal has a fault pedal position is then calculated as inferred by the other two signals a known safe value will be used if two out of the three signals have faults in other words it defaults uh, to the last known good signal and uh, tries to keep you on the road and you're going to see the percentage of this uh, position noted and you can monitor this while you're driving to see what the position of your throttle body is and uh, pedal as far as how far you have it depressed when you're operating your vehicle here's our other one right app1 accelerator position sensor one and they remember they said there are three signals so this is the second one essentially so to speak and again it has a fault pedal position is then calculated and inferred by the other two signals again you have your voltage here and it's going to tell you what the voltage is as far as it's running and whether or not it's running good again I think it's 0.5 volts and if you have a plus or minus on it I may be wrong on the volts so I'm going to tell you that off head but I believe it's 0.5 and if you see something different that may be an issue Again, APP2, accelerator position 2, same thing. It uses the other signals to help a known safe value to run. So we have our voltages again, and we can see where we're at while we're operating, whether or not this is in a good shape. This might be for your throttle body issues as far as uh, any problems you're having. Then we have accelerator position or accelerator pedal position D app D is what we call this and again it goes by percentages we will have our minimum maximums and it will tell you exactly what's going on with your uh, accelerator pedal position again another uh, you know duplicate signal sensor that is trying to help you get around and then we have app E accelerator position E uh, again percentage by values and it's constantly measuring to see where you're at so that you have the proper positions while you're operating if it faults it will then go to the last known good sensor accelerator position sensor status uh, the, this parameter indicates a real time uh, whether a fault is present so it's essentially nothing you want to monitor because you probably see a dash light it's either going to be a yes or a no and if it's yes it means you have a fault and then there will be a light so you'll know exactly where to go to to check in these different parameters we now have the app max differential maximum angle difference between app one and app two remember we had those positions well this one's trying to normalize everything out in the angle and give your minimum 
in maximum on your angle of your uh, pedal position. Again, another default sensor to help make sure everything is running good. We have our app mode, accelerator pedal position, detailed description. This parameter represents accelerator pedal position. Again, it has a fault. It uses two other signals and is used if two out of the three signals have faults. And the mode for possible values would be no pedal, part pedal, or full throttle wide open. Yes, we're race day here. So it'll tell you what your uh, position is based on those three parameters. We have the AST, time since engine start, detailed description. This parameter indicates the time since the engine was started. It's actually a clock, what your engine's running, and the time uh, will be uh, recorded as far as uh, how long you've been running your engine since you last turned the key. I don't know quite what we do with that, but uh, again, it's something you could monitor if it's important to you. Here we have, we have the all-wheel drive clutch command. All-wheel drive clutch control commanded. Available types, we can see that it runs in a percentage and it'll have a minimum maximum. And this may be very important to you if you have all-wheel drive issues, PTU and such. You can monitor what's going on in your all-wheel drive edge and see what your statuses are and see what is normal while you're in operation. Here we have the all-wheel drive CLT uh, Diag SIG, all-wheel drive clutch diagnostic signal. That's right, all-wheel drive clutch diagnostic signal. A tongue tire there. Uh, but we have a percentage by value as far as it's running. It's going to have a minimum and maximum that you can see. And I can see where this would be beneficial for the all-wheel drive folks because this is definitely some good information if you feel you're having problems with your all-wheel drive. And last but not least, we have our axle ratio status of central vehicle configuration. Axle ECC underline stat, detailed description, nothing there. But available types, the mode with the possible values be data valid, not used. Master shows not supported, master module out of range or not received from master or not configured in master. Uh, basically, nothing else will show on this other than digits with a decimal point. So I'm not quite sure what you'd be doing with this, but it could be something that would be a diagnostic tool to help you determine what's going on with your PTU. But that's it, folks. As far as you can see, we got done with all the A's, and I'll go ahead and post this video up here so that everybody can uh, tell what's going on with their P, you know, letter A's, I guess, as far as what's going on. And I measure my edge, and I have a lot of different statuses on here, as you can see, while my edge is running. And it's a very good tool to do that. But this is the first part in a series going through the Foreskin Light program on the phone app. And this is Mac T, and this is Mac T Ford Edge. And I, of course, want all of you to like and subscribe to the videos, watch them, watch the ads and also have a good time doing it. I uh, have lots of things going on here, so uh, this is just the first start of the series, and I appreciate all of you watching. Remember to go to mactgarage.com and uh, check out these four scan devices, and I have links to Amazon on which to purchase them. But overall, I'm having a great day, and my feet hit the floor today, and I want you to have a great day also and the band of one's going to play some great music mercy girl's going to have some one-liners that follow and maybe a little bonus footage at the end here or whatever else i happen to be doing have a great day thank you for watching mac t's videos and remember to like and subscribe this is a mercy girl production